over with Mark Martin looking over his left shoulder. You see just how little effort he does put in the steering wheel. We've been watching the cars on the short track, and we can see. And watch him just relax and put his arm up. Well, he's going for a Sunday Mike drive. On a Sunday drive, going to the store. Yeah. Now, yesterday morning, Jarrett and Spencer hooked up together out here and ran in the 48-second bracket. As we go to the corner, he goes a shorter distance, so Spencer does pull alongside these cars, but looks like they're dropping back on the inside. Yeah, there are there two groups is. now. Uh, the cars. This is the lead one. Yeah, the, the, the only advantage of running on the inside is the fact that it's shorter around there. And Ernie Earp is taking advantage of that short distance and moving around Dale Earnhardt. But normally the outside group is the better because you can keep the engine wound up better up there. So obviously the uh, adjustment they made on Urban's car on that pit stop helped because he is back up front. And now the battle for second is between Bodine and Dale Earnhardt. Now Ernie would love to see this guy just race side by side from now on. Oh yeah, he just will be able to pull away. Great shot from Mark Martin's car. There's Jared to the left. Everyone has a drafting partner. Just watch the RPMs and speed. 93. We can see how it doesn't accelerate down the straightaway. He holds that speed constantly. When he goes in the corner now, it will slow down just a little bit as he goes in the corner. 185 is the slowest speed we've seen. 185 to 194. And that's not because he's backing off. He's just right. scrubbing off that that's right. speed. That's right. went around the corner. Yeah. That's it. The wind. Oh, look up there. Spencer and Bodine touch. And trickle down to the inside. Makes it three wide with Jared and Martin. Ooh. Don't like to see that. Especially when you're yeah. sitting right in the front. <laughs> Get up on that outside, Dale. There's Sterling Marlin on the very right of your screen. The yellow car, the Kodak Film Chevrolet, the Daytona 500 winner. He's going for a $100,000 bonus today. And, of course, if he can win three of the big four, the two remaining races at Charlotte and at Darlington, he can win a million dollars. And look at Rusty Wallace move up. And he's going straight backwards. And while we're on commercial, Rusty Wallace did the same thing. Ooh, and Spencer has to get out of the gas as he goes in the corner, and Todd Bodine moves up in front of him. Meanwhile, Mark Martin's in that same dilemma. Jared got into and he's moving back from about seventh grade position back to about 20th. Now Mark goes to the right and falls in behind the body. There has to be somebody breaking that air in front of you, otherwise you just can't run at this place. Speed is going to have to slide up in the position to get left out. Mark right behind Morgan Shepard trying to push him, get him going. Ooh, well, there's a big difference. Well, they it? like to do that. <laughs> Well, we have had a major crash here at Talladega right in front of us, and the car that gave us the biggest scare was Mark Martin, and we can only breathe a sigh of relief to see him get out of that thing because he was without brakes and went, uh, well, went a long way, hit two guardrails in the process, and finally came to rest against another guardrail and a catch fence. Others involved include Todd Bodine, Jeff Burton there in the 88, uh, number eight car, 
<laughs> Boy, let's uh, let's take a look at what happened. Here we see Todd Bodine. He's going to be involved. Now, Jeff Gordon comes down. They're going to get three abreast, and Todd Bodine doesn't know it. He gets touched by the 77 car of Sachs. He goes down, hits the 24 car. Sachs, the 8 car, spins, and look at all these cars behind him. they got no place to go. Watch Mark Martin. He's hit someone. He has no brakes. Hits the inside retaining wall, and then he goes out of the picture, but he goes through another. We'll see it here. Now watch him. He hits the inside retaining wall. That's the car up in the middle of your screen. Hits the Die Hard 500 sign. Shoots through a guardrail right here. Goes right on through it. Moves it down. Still at top speed and hits another fence and then the guardrail and finally comes to rest. He had to be going 100 miles an hour when he hit the end of that guardrail and then went over to the second guardrail where he finally came to a stop. That was a wild ride and thank wow. God he got out of here. Man, oh man. There are only two cars here in front of us that appear to be disabled besides Mark Martin. That's Bodine and uh, Burton. And there was uh, Mark Martin getting out of the car. He appears to be injured possibly a little bit, but certainly good to see him get out of the car. Let's take a look at it again. That was the... Todd Bodine, he gets clipped by the 77 car. He and Jeff Gordon get together, and then now there's no place for these other guys to go. Rudd's involved. There we see Rudd going, and maybe he didn't have a whole lot of damage, but, man, I tell you, Mark Martin looked like he's running 200 miles an hour going through. I'm telling you, he didn't sure did. not slow down a lot. Mm -hmm. Badly battered car of Mark Martin is pulled back to the garage area, and there's very little left in the front end of that machine. There are the cars involved in the crash. Todd Bodine and also Loy Allen, Jeff Gordon, and Jeff Burton. And that's where his car, Mark Martins, came to rest. And you see, they're, they're trying to put back up a chain link fence. Is that is that a brand name or is that the type of fence? I'm not sure, but they're trying. He just ripped that baby down. He sure did. We'll show you again what happened in real time so you can get some idea of how fast Mark Martin was going when he went through one guardrail and came to rest against another. Oh, man. It's a wonder he didn't fly over that guardrail and come to land... Uh, against those people down there, maybe. Well, there's a ditch, and then, yeah. of course, the other guardrail there. Now, this ought to be a real shot. How did that camera live through all that? <laughs> Daryl Walter drove through it. Face of the earth. Here it, it is from above. Up. Oh, Jeff Gordon, nowhere to go. There on the end. There's Mark getting hit twice. Yeah. He can barely misses Daryl. Whoa, man! He couldn't have missed Daryl two inches. We see Rudd spinning down through there. Loy Allen. It's a black car. Is that twelve? Yes. Mm -hmm. Check that. Okay. And now we're going to be able to see Mark across that road and into the guardrail and catch fence. And again from the in car. I don't see this. Anymore. everybody again that we were nominated for three Emmy Awards a couple of weeks ago and we won all three of them and they were for uh, technical innovation including that type of shot that we got from the in-car camera that is unbelievable and hats off to everyone who works on the technical crew of ESPN Sweet World and they go to work on Jeff Gordon's car now for those of you who uh, visit your local racetrack and you often hear the PA announcer say, please get back away from the fence, that's the reason why. And uh, John Curtin is with Mark. Mark has been checked out in the infield care center. And Mark, that was one wild ride you took. Thank goodness you're okay. 
Yeah, I was uh, not sure worried about it. Uh, the first impact there, I lost the brakes, which wasn't going to do me much good, but it sure is a helpless feeling coming toward that guardrail with no brakes. I know it wouldn't have slowed me down any, but I'd have sure felt a lot more <laughs> normal if I'd have been able to push on the brake pedal. Uh, it scared me a little bit there. I thought uh, I thought that could be a bad one, but uh, thank goodness for those uh, roof flaps. The car didn't get upside down when it turned sideways at full speed. Thank goodness for NASCAR and the rules. It's a good run for us. We were hey, we were going to have a decent, real decent finish. We were just sitting there, you know, waiting around and, and stuff. And uh, uh, I'm proud of that Valvoline bunch and and. Uh, what else can I say? When you got out, when you got out of the car, you looked like you, you might have rung your bell or something. Uh, were you hurt momentarily there? Or are you okay? I guess I'm okay. It hurt bad. <laughs> Bennett shows on TV. You need one of those goodies, goodies hey, powders. John, huh? yeah, yeah. He's talk, he can't, there's some, there's some spots he can't talk about on television. Don't you understand? <laughs> oh, oh, okay. I understand now, Mark. What uh, what they were talking about. <laughs> <laughs> we won't discuss it, but uh, he's okay. That's the most important thing.